let's talk about gross load calculation and take a look at the steps involved in calculating gross load. As with any load chart problem, the first step is to identify what the problem is asking for. Is it a net capacity problem? Gross load problem? Are they asking for the maximum radius or the minimum boom angle? Or does the question ask for information taken directly from, low chart doc from the load chart documentation? There are some problems that you'll run into on specialty exams where no calculations are required. All you need to, need to do is find the information in the load chart or the load chart notes and answer the question. But for this video, we want to focus on gross load. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, gross load problems. You know, what is the purpose of a gross load problem? You know, why do we need to be able to calculate the gross load? By calculating the gross load, we find out what the total weight of the load is. And when we find out what the weight of the load is, we can make sure we have the correct crane and the correct setup to safely lift the load. And remember, the, the, the load weight is not just the weight of the object. It's the weight of the object plus wire rope, block, other lifting accessories, which I'm getting ahead of myself now. But uh, it's not just the object weight that we have to consider. Gross load is the weight of the object you are trying to lift plus the weight of deductions. And here's the formula for gross load and an abbreviated form which I prefer to use to save a little bit of time GL equals OW plus DED. The object weight that's going to be the weight of the object you're needing to lift. The deductions are going to be the lifting accessories implements that add to the weight of the load. This includes anything below the boom and jib tip uh, the jib, if the jib is not being used to make the lift, or if the jib is stowed on the boom. Now keep in mind, if you're lifting off the jib, do not deduct the jib. As kind of a sidebar, this is a terminology issue, uh, but I want to explain my reasoning for using the terminology I use. Uh, a lot of crane experts will use the term add-on or addition when talking about gross load. They'll use add-on or addition instead of talking about, instead of using the term deductions. And I agree, add-ons or additions, that really is the better term and it makes more sense when you're talking about the gross load. Because with gross load, remember, you're talking about the object weight plus the additional weight of wire rope and blocks and all of the other possible uh, accessories that you can add to the crane that takes away from the load or that takes away from the capacity. So add-ons or additions are really a better term. But to keep everything simple and consistent, whether it's a net capacity problem or a gross load problem, I'm going to use the term deductions. So that's why we have gross load equals object weight plus deductions. Other, other crane guys might have a different, slightly different way of writing the formula. They may have gross load equals the load weight plus additions or object weight plus add-ons. It's the same thing. But the reason I, I use deductions for everything is just to keep everything consistent. Let's move on to step two. Remember, step one was identifying what the problem was asking for. Step two is simply writing out the formula at the top of, of, the, of the work area on your scrap piece of paper. And you will be given two sheets of paper, which will give you four sides to write on and you can use that paper as uh, scrap paper for solving your problems, for, for working out all of your problems. 
once you've decided or identified what the question is asking for, write the formula that you need to solve that problem. Step three, draw out the crane's setup. Draw out its configuration. Make sure your diagram is large enough so that you don't crowd everything together. If you crowd everything together, it can lead to mistakes. So make your diagram big enough. For the boom, I, I use a diagonal line and I label it with the boom length. For radius, a horizontal line. If you have boom angle information, go ahead and write in the boom angle. Now it's possible that you're not going to have boom angle and radius. In fact, most of the time you're given one or the other, not both. If you have both, write it down. Uh, if you just have radius, label your radius. If you just have boom angle, label your boom angle. If you have an auxiliary boom head, go ahead and, and add that to your diagram and label it. I use a, a square to represent the auxiliary boom head. You could use whatever symbol or device you want to illustrate auxiliary boom head, but you want to have something in there so you don't lose track of it. And this helps you this diagram helps you stay organized and keep everything straight. And if you keep everything straight and organized, you're less likely to make a mistake. Uh, draw in your jib if it's stowed on the boom. And there's two options for your jib. It's either going to be stowed on the boom, like I illustrate here, or it's going to be erected. It's not going to be both. It's going to be erected or stowed. But draw that in. If you're lifting off the jib, make sure to write in your jib offset, in this case 15 degrees. Draw in your wire rope and your block hanging off the main boom, or it could be wire rope and a ball on the main boom. If you have multiple parts line, you don't have to draw in all four parts or six parts of line. What I like to do is just use a 4x or a 6x or a 2x, whatever the number needs to be, to represent the number of parts line. Again, for this example, let's assume we have four parts line. I'll just use a 4x to, to remind myself that I've got four parts line. Draw in the wire rope hanging off the jib and a ball. You're probably not going to have a block off the jib with the grove because it's rated for single line lifting service only off of the extension. So you're probably going to have a wire rope and a ball. Don't forget your rigging. I like to use a, just a simple triangle to represent a sling. Use that to identify and label my rigging. The next step is to write in your deduction weight. You have your diagram all nice and ready to go. Now you need to go back in and write in your deduction weights. Write in the weight for your auxiliary boom head, your block, your ball, your jib. Uh, now there's a difference between uh, a jib that's erected and a jib that's stowed. If your jib is stowed, the effective weight is going to be lower than the jib erected. And what we have over here with these numbers, just, just for the purpose of illustration, the 32-foot fixed jib, when it's stowed, the deduction is 267 pounds. When it's erected, the deduction is 4,250 pounds. The jib is not going to be stowed and erected. It's going to be one or the other. But make sure when you're writing in the deduction weights, during this step that you're using the correct number. And the numbers you're going to use are found in a table in the low chart notes. And I will show you that on the next slide so you'll know what the, what the table looks like, what, what you should be looking for.
the weight of your rigging will be given to you in the problem, either in the, the data table for the problem or the question itself. You'll be provided with the rigging weight. Wire rope could also be a deduction. You don't always have a wire rope deduction with a grove, but you could have a wire rope deduction. You could have a wire rope deduction for off the main boom. You could have a wire rope deduction if there's a jib uh, involved and the jib is not in use, you're going to have a wire rope deduction. This is the table from your load chart notes where you will find the deduction weights for extensions, 32 foot fixed extension, tele telescopic boom extension, and notice there are different weights for the 32 fixed, stowed 267, erected 4250. For the telescopic, stowed 293, erected but retracted 6368 erected extended 8460 pay attention and make sure you, tr you 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 use the correct number over on the right are weights for the auxiliary boom head and different blocks and balls that you may see on the grove specialty exam Step five, write in the object weight. The object weight will be given to you in the problem. But go ahead and plug this into your formula. Your formula is going to look like this when you do that. Gross load equals 1,200 plus DED. Step six, add up all your deductions, and you will have a calculator to use. They will provide a calculator for the exam. Pencil and paper test, the calculator will be just a small inexpensive calculator, handheld calculator. On the computer based test, the calculator will, will be built into the computer and you'll use uh, the calculator on the computer screen. Add up your deductions, all of these items in the yellow box. Now I, I went ahead and drew a line through jib stowed. We'll just assume that we have a jib erected and work with that. When we add all of those up, we come up with a total for our deductions of 5,991 pounds. We want to plug that into our formula. Our formula looks like this now. Gross load equals 1,200 plus 5,991. It's a good idea to double check your math. It's real easy to punch in a wrong number or hit a wrong button with a calculator or misread a number. So if you have time, try to make yourself have time so you can double check your math. Step seven is add up the object weight and the deductions. When we do that, we end up with a gross load value of 7,191 pounds. Step eight, once we have our gross load, we need to determine if our crane has enough capacity to handle the load. Uh, what We need to determine the maximum radius when working with this load, or the minimum boom angle, or the maximum boom length when working with this gross load of 7,191 pounds. If it doesn't look like we have enough capacity, we might have to to make some changes in our lift plan. Just a quick review of the gross load procedure. Step one, what is the question asking for? Step two, write out the formula on your worksheet. Step three, draw out the configuration. Step four, look up your deduction weights and write those in on your diagram. Step five, plug the object weight into the formula. Step six, total up your deductions. And 
Step 6b is plug your deduction total into the formula. Step 7, add the object weight and total deductions, and this will be your gross load. Step 8 is to determine if your crank can safely handle this load, and what is the maximum radius, minimum boom angle, maximum boom extension. Let's talk about wire rope deductions when we're doing gross load problems. It's a little different. Uh, gross load wire rope deduction procedure is a little different than uh, net capacity wire rope deduction. With the Grove, we deduct wire rope that is in excess of what we need to make the lift. We only deduct wire rope that's not needed to make the lift. If we have one part of line, there's not going to be a wire rope deduction with the Grove. Because we have to have at least one part line to make the lift. First step when finding the wire rope deduction for gross load problems is to find the object weight. And it will be given to you in a table or as part of the question. We divide the object weight by the capacity for a single part line. This will identify the number of parts of line that are needed to make the lift. Any extra parts of line not needed to make the lift must be deducted. Here, here's an example. We have a crane that's reeved with four parts line. The load weight is 27,000 pounds. The capacity of a single part line is 12,920 pounds. How many parts of line are needed to make the lift? How many parts of line must be deducted? Well, we want to divide the load weight by the capacity for a single line. So it's going to be 27,000 divided by 12,920 which equals 2.09. And when we're calculating uh, parts of line, we always round up. So 2.09 becomes three parts of line. Now we subtract the line that's needed from the total parts of line. We had four parts of line minus three parts that are needed, and that gives us how many extra parts of line that must be deducted. You know, one part of line needs to be deducted. When the number of extra parts of line is identified, calculate the total wire rope deduction. And here's our formula for calculating the wire rope weight. Weight equals number of parts of line tip to ground times the tip to ground distance times the weight per foot. Number of extra parts line times the tip to ground distance times the weight per foot. We have the weight per foot. It's given to us in the low chart notes. It's one pound per foot. We also know that we have one extra part line. <clears throat> so we have everything we need except tip to ground distance. And we'll find that using the range diagram. The range diagram gives us you know, tip to ground height, or as they have it labeled here, height from ground and feet. They give us the operating radius, which is the bottom of the diagram horizontally here, located along the horizontal axis. Then it gives us boom and extension length and feet over on the right side of the diagram, the vertical axis. We're going to use the boom length that's given to us in the problem along with the radius that's given to us in the problem to find the tip to ground distance. It's possible you could also be given boom length and boom angle and you can use that also. The diagonal lines uh, represent the boom angle. 0 degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, these diagonal lines. But uh, Right now we're, we're working with boom length and radius. 
we have 110 foot of boom. We find 110 foot of boom over here on the on the scale at the right. It goes from 35 out to 110, and then it's got the, the lengths for the uh, extensions. 110 foot of boom. And there's a an arced line that's associated with 110 feet of boom. And it's highlighted in green on your screen. Okay, once we find that arc for 110 feet of boom, we then want to find the radius, a vertical line that's associated with radius. If we have a 70 foot radius, we find the vertical line for 70 foot of radius. Where those two points intersect, if we draw an imaginary line back to the left, that's going to, that line is going to point at our tip to ground distance. In this case, that line falls between 80 feet and 90 feet. If we're between values, we always go with the higher value for tip to ground distance. If we, when we're between 80 and 90, we go to 90. Our tip to ground distance is 90 feet. If we were between 70 and 80, we would use 80. And now we have everything we need to calculate the weight of the wire rope. We have one part, 90 feet, and one pound. Gives us a total wire rope deduction weight of 90 pounds. Again, just a reminder, if the intersection of a boom and radius fall between two tip heights, use the greatest tip height. Like we had here, we were between 80 and 90, so we use 90. There's another video available that focuses specifically on using the Grove Range Diagram. I would encourage um, you I would encourage everyone to take a look at that. This is probably the trickiest part of the Grove low chart problems is using the range diagram. And that video, it's about 10 minutes long, it goes into more detail explaining how to use a range diagram and some little tricks and tips and some rules to follow when using the range diagram. Last thing I want to talk about are some common errors or common mistakes on low chart problems. Uh, misreading a number, a mathematical error, missing a deduction, or deducting something that shouldn't be deducted. The classic example of that is we're lifting off the jib and we deduct the jib. If you're making a lift off the jib, you don't have to deduct the jib because the jib chart already has made allowances for the extra uh, for the jib being installed. So be careful. Uh, if you've got a jib erected and you're lifting off the jib, you don't have to deduct it. Another mistake that we have to guard against is writing down the wrong weight for a deduction. Using the wrong chart. With the Grove, there are really just four charts. There's only seven pages. That's one thing that makes the Grove specialty exam, I think, a little easier because you only have seven pages of low chart to deal with. And of that seven pages, there are four charts. There's a chart for 360 degrees main boom, a chart for 360 degrees over the rear. There's a chart for the 32 foot fixed extension and a chart for the telescopic extension. But make sure that you're on the correct chart. If you're on the wrong chart, you're going to end up with wrong numbers and a wrong answer. Be careful calculating your wire rope deduction. Again, I would recommend taking a look at the range diagram video because that's, that's probably the trickiest part of the wire rope deduction is uh, using that range diagram. 
Remember that with the Grove, we only deduct the wire rope that's in excess of what we need for the lift. And if you have a single part line, if you're lifting on a single part line, there won't be a, there won't be a deduction. Misreading the chart. Not just using the wrong chart, as I indicated up here, but it's also possible to misread the chart. Yeah, one little trick or technique that you can use that will help read it, help you read the chart and also will help a lot on the range diagram is using your scrap paper as a straight edge. You can line the straight edge of that paper up against your chart or your range diagram and it can make it easier to read correctly the information from the chart or the range diagram. And I talk more about that in the uh, range diagram video. You might, might want to take a look at it. Well, that's it for the uh, procedure involved in calculating gross load for the Grove Telescopic Boom Crane. Practice, practice, practice. Hopefully you have a good set of problems that you can work with. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. The more you practice, the faster you're going to get and the more accurate you're going to be. Uh, good luck on your exam.